This is Tom Racky, and today I'm going over the butter and dairy secret for stronger bones revealed. We're starting now. I have to apologize to you guys, the viewers. I had some artery videos and they had a ton of views and I unfairly demonized butter and dairy in the past. I kind of bought into the old cookie cutter training, but now my eyes are open. I'm looking at a lot of the newer studies and the bottom line is for eggs, for butter, everything, all these high level systematic analyses, meta analyses are coming out and the cholesterol in our diet is playing a smaller and smaller and smaller role. And all these synthetic additives and replacements like low fat foods are actually more dangerous and inflammatory for us. So the debate between butter and margarine involves considerations of taste, health, and nutritional content. So here's the breakdown. Butter is a dairy product made from churning cream and milk to separate the solids, the solid fats from the liquid, which is the butter milk. The benefits of butter, it is a natural dairy product with a simple, more natural manufacturing process. Many people prefer the taste of butter for its richer, creamier flavor. And for baking, butter is often favored in baking to create flaky textures and rich flavors. The good news is butter actually has amounts of vitamin A, E, K2, as well as some healthy fatty acids. But the negatives are it does have some more saturated fats, which has been linked to cholesterol levels. But I think as time goes on, this has started to get disproven. And this kind of goes back to Ansel Keys and his seven country study. I touch upon this in my other videos, but essentially Dr. Keyes looked at studies from countries and initially associated high levels of fat intake with higher levels cholesterol and higher levels of heart attacks. But there's something called the French paradox. And some people do report that France was left off this study. And for example, France has high amounts of butter use. You know, they eat their baguettes, their croissants. See, my wife speaks French, so I can pronounce it like that. But essentially these foods in France did not lead to higher levels of heart attacks. And for example, if you look at countries that eat the most meat, or if you look at regions like Hong Kong that eat the most meat, they actually lead the world in number one lifespan. Now granted, they do have some heart issues in that country, but other countries like India, for example, who eat the highest percentage of vegetables or vegan, they have high levels of heart attacks. So something to consider, these studies now show that it's not the case. And butter is also calorically dense if you eat too much of it, you can gain weight. Now let's take a look at margarine. So margarine was historically considered the healthy option. Margarine is a non-dairy product typically made from vegetable oils. It has lower saturated fats. Most margarines are made from vegetable oils and contain less saturated fat than butter. Historically, margarine ended up being terrible for you because it had trans fats, but now trans fats are technically banned so they should be eliminated as of 2020. Margarine is also fortified with plant sterols. These can help lower cholesterols. And technically margarine is suitable for vegans or those with lactose intolerance. So if you're a vegan or have lactose intolerance, margarine is probably the way to go. The negatives are historically these had a lot of trans fats, which actually did raise cholesterol more than butter. And they have artificial ingredients at flavors, colors, depending on the brand. And for cooking and taste, it's said not to taste as good. Nutritionally, they're both pretty high in calories. Fat content, the butter is higher in saturated fat, but the margarine's lower in saturated fat. Cholesterol is present in butter, but margarine does not contain cholesterol. The difference between butter and margarine comes down to your preferences. The reality is both are probably not the healthiest for you. But now as time goes on, butter was probably unfairly demonized. In my opinion, looking at the studies, it's probably the more natural and healthier option and does have some vitamins in it. And the cholesterol in butter is actually involved in vitamin D synthesis. There is that benefit. Is this significant? It's probably not very significant. Dietary cholesterol is not necessarily said to raise your blood level as high as previously thought. And that kind of goes back to Dr. Keyes 
and the French paradox in the past, there is a lot of individual variation. Some individuals are referred to as hyper-responders. They show a significant change in blood cholesterol when their diet changes, but a lot of people now are not necessarily effective. There are high-level meta-analyses on butter. Studies specifically focusing on butter have produced mixed results. Some research says that butter might raise LDL cholesterol compared to other fats like olive oil, but less so than trans fats or some saturated fats found in processed foods. A 2016 meta-analysis published across nine papers in 15 countries concluded that butter consumption was weakly associated with a high incidence of cardiovascular disease. It did actually lower diabetes rates slightly, and the rationale for this was that calories from the fat made you eat less sugar, and there was no significant association with overall mortality. So what does this all mean? The effect of butter on health can differ significantly depending on what it's replacing in the diet. For example, if you eat buttery foods and cut out sugary foods, it's probably better for you. But if you're cutting out olive oil or nuts, for example, that's probably not a great trade. The current guidelines and recommendations are that moderation is key. Butter is seen as preferable to trans fatty foods like margarine in the past. Surprisingly, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of heat here, but in the paper they state that butter is probably not as healthy as some vegetable oils. But I know whenever I mention vegetable oils, people get upset, especially. The American Heart Association recommends limiting saturated fat intake. It should be no more than about 5% of your daily calories. Butter is not as evil as we once thought it was, but it should comprise a very small amount of your diet, no more than 5% of your calories. You want to eat more protein, more fruits, more vegetables, more whole grains, more lean proteins. That's really the key for healthy diet and living. Let's look at the vitamins in butter. Butter does have some vitamin D, and there is an association between vitamin D and calcium, but it's not huge. Butter also does contain some vitamin K2. I did watch a study on this, but the vitamin K2 level is actually pretty low. Like realistically, if you supplement your vitamin K2 or get it in the form of eggs or some other meats, it's significantly higher. You also wanna consider grass-fed versus regular butter. Grass-fed butter has higher levels of vitamins and potentially higher amounts of omega-3 fatty acids. And for this reason, butter and dairy can be very helpful. I did a video about the top 10 lies about dairy, and the bottom line is, a lot of people are lactose intolerant and can't take it in, but those who can, generally they have stronger bones, stronger vitamin D levels, stronger vitamin K2 levels, and butter kind of follows along with that. Between dairy and butter, because technically butter is dairy, they can be helpful and have been shown to be helpful for your osteoporosis. There was a meta-analysis on dairy intake and reduced osteoporotic fractures, and these did show that dairy significantly can help with osteoporosis risk. But here's the real key for osteoporosis. There is something called Wolf's Law. It's not whether you eat butter or dairy, it's how much stress and strain you put on your muscles and your bone. In society today, we're not doing that. Osteoporosis risk is high as we get older. There's more smoking, more alcohol, more stress, we're not moving as much. This is very important. You have to strength train and resistance train to address your osteoporosis. So while butter is not as demonized as it once was, it's not some type of miracle solution for osteoporosis either. Butter and milk are healthier than previously reported and studies and science backs that up, but you still need to strength train to strengthen those bones. I always tell people it's 100 times more risky not to strength train than to strength train. And the reason your back hurts and your joints hurt when you initially start is because you're not doing enough of it. Once you start strengthening your body, your bones will strengthen, your tissue and your muscle will strengthen. Check out my guide on all the best supplements and treatments for osteoporosis below.